All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so this is going to be a first for me. I'm doing a, an album cover, or coloring an album cover anyway. Uh, this was drawn by uh, Isaac Goodhart. Uh, you guys know I've worked with on Postal. And so uh, the music you're hearing in the background, which I plan on putting in <laughs> when I'm going to edit uh, edit this video, uh, is actually from this uh, from this single or from this album, uh, I believe. Uh, I don't know if it's the album or if it's this single uh, to be exact, but um, uh, the band is called Childish Japes, uh, J A P E S, Childish. J A P E S looks like they're on uh, Google Play Music and YouTube and Spotify and all the places you kids these days uh, get your music. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool. And so uh, they approached me. Um, Isaac had recommended uh, they get in touch with me since I've worked with him several times on um, a couple of projects at this point. And um, and it was their first time, the band's first time, I think, working with a, a kind of a, a, a comic duo, I think, like this. And uh, so, you know, they weren't sure if there should be direction or not and that kind of thing. And I was like, well, I was like, uh, sure. <laughs> you know, uh, I, the only thing that I asked was, um, you know, are we doing this literally as in, you know, these buildings across the street are on fire uh, and the whole thing's kind of reds and oranges or, you know, it looked to me like there was some, you know, duality themes happening here um, with the nice uh, neighborhood on the left and the uh, uh, wreck on the right with the fire and rubble and all that. And he said, yeah, there's definitely some, uh, uh, this is one of the themes of the song. And so, um, so yeah, that's what we're going to try to do. And I haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm going to do that yet. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about just literally... Um, you know, doing one side bright sunshiny day, the other side, you know, obviously it's on fire and, you know, it's, they're not having a, a good time there. So, um, but, you know, how I'm going to blend that and how I want to do it, I haven't quite decided yet, so I'm just going to kind of play around with it. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to get started. I haven't really done a just, you know, color something in real time video in a while, so uh, I thought it was a good time. So, yeah, let's get started. Um, I'm going to start... Uh, because the fire is going to be kind of, you know, uh, you know, overpowering visually. I think I want to do that first, and then kind of build around that. Uh, but you guys are pretty much seeing my thought process in uh, in real time here. So, so yeah, let's get started. Um, so I'm going to start with the sky, and I'm just going to sort of do some experimenting here. Um, with, uh, like I said, some pretty blues on the left side and there's maybe some orange stuff over here. I don't want it to be too close. One of the, the things that's going to be interesting about this is, um, you know, keeping the letters, uh, le you know, legible. Um, on both sides, so and I think I'm going to leave the letters white. I just think that looks good, and that blend doesn't actually look that bad. I was actually concerned about the sky, but we'll see. We'll see where that goes. And fire. Uh, I'm going to switch to color dodge. Uh, so this is just a round brush color dodge mode, and uh, it's good for flames because it just uh, it looks very it looks very hot and so it's at a very low opacity I could probably bump it up a little bit but it gets really really hot pretty quickly without much um, uh, without having to use it very much so it's 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 I've only got this brush at like 34 percent or so and uh, you know it gets uh, well I'll show you what I mean here if I put it up to a hundred it's just like instant you know blowing it out which we don't really want not everywhere anyway 
and I'm just using a soft round brush. This is not a special brush or anything. Um, you guys that follow my channel and watch a lot of the videos know that I've talked about the, the another YouTube channel uh, from a guy called Boro Dante, uh, B-O-R-O -O Dante. And he did a great video recently on brushes um, and why you should stop asking people for brushes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really mind. Like, I totally understand it because I was, I mean, I was there at one point where I was thinking, yeah, it's the cool brushes are what makes cool digital art, and it just doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Some of the best pieces are made with the simplest little brushes you can imagine. And, um, but no, he actually, the video continues to actually show you how to make your own brushes. That's part of the best brush tutorials that I think I've seen. Um, and uh, I don't know, I'm a lazy brush maker. Like, I don't really get into making my own um, or anything like that. I just sort of would prefer to buy or download someone else's. Um, it just comes down to time. Like it's 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 not a lot to learn. I wouldn't think. Like there's a lot of settings, especially in Photoshop and you know Procreate. Clip Studio is brush engine is just nuts. I mean, I've been watching some clip tutorials recently, and um, and I've got it on the iPad, and I've done some work with it, but um, I haven't really uh, spent a lot of time with it, but. I was really just amazed by the flexibility of their brush engine. I mean, if you can imagine it, I mean, you can make it. So, uh, right now, I am just selecting all of these lines because I think I want to. I want to like color all these lines uh, red or red-ish. what just happened to my selection okay that was weird <laughs> is it really gone yep it's still it's gone undo does it do anything alrighty then let's do that again <laughs> I don't know what just happened, honestly. I didn't I didn't click undo. I don't know, maybe it didn't save. Um, so I have I ran an action to uh, copy the uh, copy the inks to a channel and then um, copied them back to a layer with just the black parts on a layer. So it makes the inks transparent. Uh, Photoshop actions are just a way to... Um, you can basically record actions in Photoshop and then play them back. And I use quite a few for um, creating, you know, my print files and... Uh, web files and just different things that I do a lot and so I can basically open up like uh, a bunch of pages 10 20 pages at a time because of my, my computer's got a lot of memory and um, and then just basically automate batch and it does all the steps that I want it to do to create my CMYK files all at one time and one of the actions I have is that holds action to change the color of the lines. So if you're wondering where that came from, that's what that was. So the way I usually do this, I've selected the the holds here. You can see the selection. I'm hiding the selection. I have a keyboard shortcut for that because I don't want to see it. And uh, then hue saturation. Uh, I'm gonna like while I'm on this orange color, I'm gonna click colorize and brighten it a little bit and saturate it a little bit and shift it toward red a little bit 
And I'm, I plan on doing some glows over this too, so something like that. I actually might let this red kind of spill into the this area too. There's lots of ways to do color holds, but um, this is a way that I learned a thousand years ago and <laughs> I've been doing it ever since. So I think there are honestly even better ways now. I'm just I'm lazy about figuring them out. <laughs> like, uh, let's see. Yeah, just letting that fade down a little bit. Alrighty. And let's go ahead and do some glows. So for glows, I think I have an action for this too. I'll show you how this works. So see that make SFX layer? Let me delete that. So I'm just going to click F9. i am got it set to F9. And it immediately creates a layer, fills it with black, uh, renames it to SFX and puts it right above the inks. Um, I don't always do holds, so I always name the layers the same thing, and you can base actions off layer names. So it always, you know, clicks the inks, creates a new layer above it, fills it with black, and sets it to screen mode. It does all of that with one button. That's why actions are awesome, because just about every page has an SFX layer. Um, but it all happens really quickly. So watch the layer window. Done. Just did like five things. Actions are awesome. All right, and I'm in that mode, uh, in on that layer, I'm going to go to my hard light mode brush. Really bright orange, and I'm going to just brush all this in over here. And you see, like, I'm doing it in some of the windows, but not all the windows. I can, you know, make it look a little bit interesting. So, yeah. I've been doing all this on one layer just because I feel pretty confident about how this looks. Um, but some. If you want to do this on multiple layers, of course you can. I just, I think this is going to be pretty cool the way it is. Mm, let's see. So again, just big soft brush, hard light mode. Isaac's work is so strong. Like I, there's so little I have to do <laughs> on. Uh, really like his shadows or like spot blacks is the industry term for these deep you know just black areas of shadow and it is a lost art with a lot of artists these days um, I'm not sure when that happened but um, yeah a lot a lot of artists I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just kind of a stylistic choice. People are just relying on colorists more, I think, because the colors have improved so much. So, um, so anyway. But yeah, Isaac still, still uses those.
I'm going to do this on, on a mask just so I can, uh, if I want to end up changing this color, I can. So I'm going to make a new uh, solid color adjustment layer, which is just solid color. Uh, around the same color as my fire, basically, just that bright orange. Uh, I'm going to set it to hard light. Uh, hard light, not soft light. And then just fill the mask with black. So it, right now it's not affecting anything. And then I can go into my uh, flats. And I actually have recently started having my assistant uh, separate foreground from background. Just basically, not even foreground, background. Just like characters from background. Um, and that way, if I just want to quickly select all of him, I can just control click on that uh, FG layer, the foreground layer, and it'll select him without having to go select everything else. Uh, the other reason I did this is because it makes it easier with Procreate to um, make selections because uh, I do a lot of rendering in Procreate these days and um, I don't find myself needing to select each little area of the flats because the pencil's pretty accurate, but but obviously Photoshop is still works. <laughs> I still use it a lot. Just depends on kind of what I'm in the mood for. Um, This is just a chunky kind of square brush I've been using a lot lately. You guys have probably seen it. Um, it's um, one of Bordante's brushes, actually, a square brush. He does have his brushes on, a, I think they're on a public Patreon page. If you search for Bordante brushes, you'll find them. And I want to do some brighter highlights, so I'm going to make another one of these layers. Make them pretty bright, really bright. Same thing, just select him. And this is pretty low opacity. I got two versions of this. I've got like a 90% opacity version and then a like a 92% opacity version. So. This one um, a little bit stronger. I, I, I usually will, will will do that with a brush I like. Is that if I use it a lot, I'll go ahead and set up like that square brush. Um, I've got like a small, really small version. I have a twenty five percent opacity version, and then like this the regular like ninety percent. It's just so I don't have to go up and manually change the um, change the opacity every time. It's just clicker, clicker. It's quicker to click over here once than to go up here and slide around the slider. And I think I want this more yellow than white. Do, 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 do. Now for this, like I'm really treating this as like we're going through a portal into this other side, right? So um, these buildings aren't going to be lit by the fire. I'm gonna, they're just like they're gonna be lit from the sun. So um, and I'm just gonna get a. Let's see, what else can I show you guys? We can do. I'll show you something we can do. I don't know if I've done this on the channel or not. I talk about this trick in uh, 
the second Photoshop coloring course. I've also got some of my actions in that too, if you guys are interested. Um, up there, 01artschool.com. That's where all my courses are living these days. So what I'm going to do, I've just selected like a random area of this side and I'm going to go to the, uh, let's see, we can do curves. And you'll see that as we start adjusting these curves, it's adjusting all of these colors. And, and then we can make it saturate a little bit like that. So it looks, does a pretty good job of looking like light um, but it's not adding any color at this point so like we can go into the like blue for example and pull some blue out of it which will actually make it a little bit yellow so this is all on one adjustment layer my cat is um, clawing the floor behind me sorry if you hear that so all in one adjustment here, we're brightening, we're adding some contrast, and we're shifting it a little bit toward yellow. So now I can paint with that. And I really have to think about picking colors. So this is a pretty fast way to do this. Uh, there's another YouTuber that I've started following recently. Um, and I can't think of his name right now. Let me see. He's a digital painter primarily, and he does some cool stuff with layer adjustments. And I'm trying to find his name. <laughs> uh, Apturus. Apturus. I don't know. A P T E R U S. He's, they're mostly time lapse videos, but I've literally like paused them and like freeze frame them sometimes to see what he's doing in Photoshop. And um, he does cool stuff. I wish I could do some of this cool stuff. But um, but now I'm on this curves adjustment. There's a mask next to it, so I can paint with white on the mask, and I can, I'm basically getting that adjustment wherever I paint. And I'm looking for a regular old round brush. This is a little bit more cramped than usual. Oh, I, I don't, I don't, that's what I did. Let's move this. There we go. So anyway, everywhere that I paint now on this layer, I'm getting that adjustment and it, all the opacities work and all that stuff. So. So as these go like further away, I'm kind of lessening the effect because I don't want as much contrast back here. Like with atmospheric perspective, you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, but as things go further into the distance, they get less and less saturated. And um, but yeah, the in the amount of um, of effect that I want is controlled by the opacity too. So like I can very, very subtly, you know, let me go someplace where I haven't done it yet. Like this is a 25% opacity brush and you can see that I'm adding this and it doesn't affect it very much. Um, but if I switch to like a, a higher opacity brush, then you'll get more of that effect, you know, so. And the cool thing is you can shift it at any point. Um, you can always go back and I can go right back into the layers adjustment and change it after I've worked on it. You know, so it's a pretty neat little shortcut. All right. 
Moving on to the sidewalk. I basically just selected all of it and then removed that edge because I just want to, I don't want to get the, uh, the side, the side part there, the vertical part of the sidewalk, the curb, I think is what they call, they call that. <laughs> See that curves adjustment doesn't work quite as well on this gray color, so I'm just gonna make another layer and uh, screen mode maybe. Again, a little bit brighter, closer to us, and not quite as bright further away. That's it's very very subtle here, but. Um, This fence is coming out to yellow. Again, brighter, closer to us, a little bit darker, further away. Now, um, all of these, um, all of these houses are um, slightly different colors, which is fine. I really just want to get the get the front, so I'm just uh, selecting that and the windows. I probably need to do each one separately. And I'm removing from my selection by holding down Alt. I always have to look down. I never know if it's Alt or Shift or Control. Um, so that's that's very handy in Photoshop. You don't like I've selected all of it and then just removed this part. I'll never forget when I first started coloring. I thought if you messed up, that you know you just messed up. Like you got to start your selection over. So I would like make this complicated selection and be like, crap! Like I messed it up. I got to undo. And here we go. Like I, didn't, I mean, it was like the first two things I ever colored. I didn't I had no idea. And it seems ridiculous now, but someone watching this is probably going, I didn't know you could do that. All right, so we got a little bit of depth with our houses. I didn't really get this one, did I? Right in the front. I'm just getting these little um, posts that are in the front. But they would catch a little bit more light. Usually at this point I get someone in the comments uh, asking about speed. Because I, I mean I'm, I'm pretty fast at this. Um, but I've also been I mean, I've been drawing since I was born, <laughs> basically. So, um, and I've been I've been working with a digital tablet since like, yeah, like sixteen years at this point. So it just takes time. You gotta, you just gotta stick with it. Practice. 
can't rush that. Something else that a lot of people don't know about, if you want to paint something perfectly straight, start it and then hold down shift and click at the bottom and you'll see that it, let me zoom up so you guys can see this. Um, like on this um, pole here, I can start painting with my brush and then switch to the, and then let, like hit shift, let go, and then click at the bottom and you see how it, it went all the way down from the top to the bottom. So start drawing, shift, click the bottom, and it's a perfectly straight line. Pretty cool, huh? I don't do this very often. I'm surprised that I got it right the first time. Alrighty. I've got OBS open over here. It's like a smaller version of it, so just seeing that it reads, it's very colorful. You know, so if this popped up on your Spotify playlist or your iPhone or whatever, it would look cool, right? You can definitely read. You can definitely read it at a very small size, which is good. Yeah, this is the part where I just stare at it until I figure out what I want to do next. Um, I want to get the, f the fronts of these little awnings here. Now if I want to add to a selection, I talked about removing one earlier, um, I can just hold down shift and do the same thing. And that works with the magic wand or the lasso. some sort of vibration going on. I don't know what that is. I have to figure that out. It might be the light. I've got the light kind of at an angle. It might maybe rubbing against something. So... I'm trying to decide if I think he stands out quite enough. Um, I just want to experiment here for a second. It's just a multiply layer. Um, 
in like a bright, bright orangey color. I used to use I used to use multiply really wrong too early on. When you're using multiply, you use like really bright colors. Because if you use really dark colors, not even really dark colors, like that is too dark. <laughs> and I'm like halfway down, you know. So stay away from all this stuff down here. I think the problem is I would need more depth on the left side. So you see how on on the right side I've got this red you know, the line the value of the lines is brighter. And so it's um you know it, it sort of stands out against him. But this stuff way back here is not and on a sunshiny day with that much atmosphere, this would actually be a little bit cooler. So let's add some atmosphere to the other side. I'm just going to select all of the inks on this side. And I'm going to go ahead and select them all, even though like down here, I'm probably not going to lighten this up that much, but I might as well go ahead and select all of it. Yeah, I'm not going to do it down this far, so we won't worry about the bottom. Um, sometimes if I just want to see what I've selected, just to show you a trick I do, I'll just fill, like, fill it on, on top with something crazy that looks really wrong, but it'll show me exactly where I feel that this is not that complex of a selection, but I'm just going to use that as a, um, to basically say my selection. You can also do that in alpha channels, but I've, I've never really bothered. And I don't know if I'm going to be doing it down here or not, but I'm going to select it anyway, just in case. Just like the top part. There we go. So I like rename this um, left side holds, just so I'll know that's what that is. And I'll put it on the bottom because it doesn't really matter where it is now. So now I can select all of that, and let's see. I can do this on the holds, and I'm just going to get a blue color, and let me try hard light. I might use screen though. This is probably going to be too strong. Yeah, let me use screen. And it's going to still be pretty, um, pretty dark in the front. So I'm really just going way back here in the back and lighting that up back there. Yeah, that helps helps them stand out a little bit more on that side. I'm going to lighten this tree that's down the street a little bit and desaturate it a little bit and brighten it a little bit. Because again, it's it's further away.
I want to try one more thing here. I, I like this, but I want to experiment here. All right, I'm going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to split this right down the middle. And take this whole concept like a complete step further. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't know if I'm going to like this or not, but I'm going to try it. So that is a, it's a gradient map. And it's like, uh, it's, um, so basically it's taking the darkest values and turning them purple. I've got it in color mode. And then the, um, the brightest values and making them orange. And I want to shift this a little bit yellow. And you can add different colors. This gets a little complicated technically, but so basically all the brightest parts of the image are being mapped to yellow the middle tones are this orangey color and the darkest parts are this purple. And you can also adjust the opacity of the effect, of course. And then invert the selection. And I'm going to do another one. Except this time we're going to go blue we keep that yellow on that side maybe and the middle All of these values are pretty bright. And I don't think I'm going to keep this um, quite this harsh. Um, This is really literal now. Uh, let's see. I'm just lowering the opacity. Again, it's in color mode. And then uh, let's say if I don't want it to affect him at all, I can just choose him and fill both masks with black. I like this better. We're getting warmer. I don't know if I'm crazy about this effect being like that line being that hard. So I can go to the mask, like again the mask for the uh, like the blue side here, and get just a soft brush. I've never masked a mask before, but I think this is really gonna work. It's just a second level of the mask, so. But it's not letting me. 
Oh, the target layer is hidden, that's why. I don't think I've ever done this before, but let's see what happens. So I basically just want to soften the effect in the middle. Once I paint both of them away, that's probably... I don't know if it's going to work the way I expect it to, but... It's not... Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah, I like it. Um, let's see. I think it's a little strong on the left side. I think the blue is a little too blue, so I'm just toning this down some. I basically don't want any pure orange like those rooftops. So like 20% bluish now. We really got like the whole rainbow in here now. I like it. I like it. Okay, so what do you guys think? Hopefully you dig it. Um, all right, last experiment. I'm going to select him. And just, this is a, get under the holds. This is not particularly artistic, but I'm just seeing if there's another color I like better. Um, the red kind of looks cool, but it looks like he's like he's given in to the right side now. <laughs> I mean, the background's pretty saturated now, so. Maybe we just desaturate him. I don't know. I like it. So I'm going to send this off and see what they think. And um, yeah, if you like the intro, the music I played at the beginning, then you know check that band out. I'll put links in the description. Um, I don't really have. I don't have any connection. I don't make any money off the album or anything. Or uh, so um, I'm just. Uh, I thought it sounded cool. I thought it was a cool cover. And uh, so, yeah, I think we're going to call it for now. And uh, there's going to be a couple of these, I think. So there's going to be a couple of other um, songs, singles that we're going to be doing these for. So uh, he said he didn't care if I put them on YouTube. So I will probably um, continue to do that as long as deadlines allow me to talk my way through all of this. So, yeah, if you enjoyed the video today, be sure to check all the links in the description. I've got my coloring courses and Patreon and all that stuff and uh, uh, do uh, subscribe if you want to see more of these and give the video a thumbs up I know you hear that all the time from youtubers but it makes it makes a big difference Just a thumbs up there you go <laughs> alright take it easy guys later